complex systems um, is, is a research area that incorporates a lot of different fields, and mathematics is one of them. And then there is biology and chemistry and physics and pretty much everything. And, uh, and, under, and sort of an, an overarching theme is identifying common mathematical laws that apply to all of these areas. So you can think of um, identifying patterns, identifying structure, identifying organization, and you can do that, like in my case, for quantum systems, or you can do it for networks, which is more of your area. So, so we, we, we were talking about what it is that makes a system complex, what complexity is, and one of the <coughs> things we came up with is when uh, the whole is bigger than the sum of the parts. So you have uh, quite simple components making up the system and their interactions in some subtle ways create behavior which is very different from what any single one of them could achieve. Um, an example of this is the brain. Neurons themselves are very simple devices. They just go off and on and send electrical signals, but somehow by them coming together you have uh, memory and consciousness and things like that. And how, how does this come about is something we'd like to understand. You can even go further down. So you have the neuron, which um, millions and millions of them lead to the brain, but the neuron itself is also basically a complex system because it consists of thousands of atoms, and an atom itself doesn't have the same property as a neuron has. So you can really go down the scale um, and upwards, and it's, it's, a, it's a hierarchy of of structure that we try to understand. We are both working with systems which are complex but with different systems. So I'm looking at complexity in networks. So I'm studying how uh, either large networks of computers such as the internet behave, how, uh, uh, how information spreads through this network, how you can control uh, the whole thing by just controlling parts of it. Uh, for example, how does uh, the internet send messages from one computer to another? In order to do this, it has to find routes through the system, which may be changing because some of the computers in it may be taken down or switched on or whatever. So, uh, uh, so somehow the whole system is measuring parts of itself. These measurements uh, are... Uh, passed on to other computers in the system. It's like a living organism in, in that way. It's like the body that uh, responds to stimuli, that monitors itself, and so on. So I'm looking at uh, uh, complex networks, uh, but uh, possibly of computers, but also possibly of individuals. So how do, uh, say, uh, epidemics spread in a biological population, or how do the beliefs of people uh, influence each other. So, for example, what is it that causes uh, financial bubbles? So, the spread of uh, the spread and interaction of information in networks is what I'm looking at. Yeah, and I I take the idea of um, having a system like the internet, which is highly structured. I mean, it's not just a random bunch of computers hooked up coincidentally, but there is an internal structure to it, which you have lot. You have hubs that lots of smaller computers are connected to. And because of this structure, the Internet is, is a highly functional system. And it seems as if nature uses the same principle. So whenever something is highly structured, it is highly functional. Nature never does anything random, just purely random. When you look around and you look at, I don't know, a leaf of a, a flower, and you see it's definitely structured, not just random, but it's also not completely symmetric. So it's, it's an interplay between a symmetry and a, and a disorder, if you like. And this you find this on all steps of this hierarchy that we talked about before, a hierarchy of, of natural organization. You always find this interplay between disorder and structure. And um, I want to understand how nature uses this, or why does it use this, because um, it's so abundant everywhere. And I want to find the underlying mathematics of the structure. Um, starting from quantum systems, going up the molecular hierarchy up to systems that we can actually look at with our eye. Um, so you, you can see the interplay between engineering and 
understanding a natural system. So you can both use what we understand in a natural system to act actually engineer an efficient, say an efficient router system or an efficient computer, which is exactly what quantum computation tries to do. And, and you can take it the other way around, you can understand a natural system by having this idea of, oh, maybe it does use structure as a, as a tool, so as a mutual benefit. One of the big goals in, in our decade, maybe century, is to build a quantum computer. And this is basically a physical object, right? So we're dealing with physical elements and we have to obey physical laws to make it happen. And then if we apply not only the physical laws, but we understand in what way nature is acting on these physical laws itself very efficiently, we try to imitate that and build an efficient computer. So that's a pretty good example in borrowing nature's smartness, or um, copying nature's smartness to engineer something. Um, yeah, I don't know if that... Yeah, I, I think so, sometimes it, you can learn from nature, but sometimes uh, things go in the opposite direction as well. Mm -hmm. You can... Um, the goal is not necessarily just to uh, replicate natural mechanisms, but to understand how they work in the first place. and. Uh, historically, one of the ideas that's been very powerful in physics is that uh, that you can pose physical laws as optimizing something. For example, like takes the shortest path between things. So, uh, if we could uh, come up with a mathematical framework of what nature is trying to optimize, what some structure is trying to do, uh, then perhaps we can understand why certain kinds of structures arise in the first place. So the interplay can be in both directions. And it's an idea that has come up rather recently that nature possibly tries to optimize information processing. In addition to energy optimization would be the, the subject of physics um, for the first, I guess, 200 centuries or something. And now information comes into play and it turns out to be a very powerful tool for complex systems um, all, all through the fields that are attached to complex systems. Optimizing information, storage and processing um, is a common theme in a way in, in these areas. Um, but we haven't understood it fully yet, so... Do you think you will? Of course. <laughs>